The Autobiography of Lincoln Steffens, published in 1931, provides an insightful account of the influential investigative journalist's life, expressed in his own memorable words, starting with his childhood in Sacramento during the early years of California's statehood, Steffens chronicles his journey into journalism, and the development of his leftist political beliefs culminating in his eventual embrace of Soviet communism. Today, Steffens is recognized as one of the pioneering muckraking journalists who played a pivotal role in highlighting corruption within the profession in the United States. Although born in San Francisco to wealthy parents, Joseph and Elizabeth Steffens, Lincoln Steffens' earliest recollections revolve around his family's home in Sacramento, which later became the California governor's mansion. In the first 200 pages of his memoir, Steffens paints a vivid picture of an idyllic childhood, spent exploring the city and its surroundings on the back of his beloved pony. His natural curiosity and interactions with people from various walks of life provide valuable insights and shape his future career. For instance, at a young age, he discovers that the horse races his father enjoys betting on are rigged to exploit unsuspecting participants. This realization leads Steffens to develop a disdain for those being taken advantage of and a determination not to become a sucker himself. Leaving home to pursue higher education at Berkeley, Steffens later reflects critically on the education he received there, claiming that while it is possible to attain an education at a university, such instances are rare. Alongside his studies, Steffens also maintains a secret engagement with his fiancée. Upon graduating, he appeals to his father for financial support to travel to Europe. In Europe, he immerses himself in the study of psychology and philosophy, under the guidance of renowned figures in Leipzig, Paris, and other major cities. However, he continues to feel dissatisfied with formal education, as his teachers often disagree on matters of knowledge, morality, and the nature of good and evil. Upon arriving in New York at the age of 26, Steffens discovers a letter from his father awaiting him. Enclosed with $100, the letter instructs him to stay in New York and gain practical experience in life. Having already married his fiancé in Europe without informing his family, Steffens feels compelled to comply with his father's wishes. After securing a position at the New York Commercial Advertiser, Steffens recalls that his fondest memories from that time revolve not around work but the leisurely afternoons spent drinking on the fire escape and playfully hurling grapefruits at unsuspecting pedestrians. He later moves on to the New York Evening Post and eventually finds himself at McClure's Magazine, where he collaborates with fellow journalists Ida Tarbell and Ray Stannard Baker in pioneering the magazine's distinctive brand of investigative journalism. Steffens focuses on exposing corruption within local governments, becoming a leading voice in the field. He publishes two collections of articles, The Shame of the Cities, 1904, and The Struggle for Self-Government, 1906, along with a book titled, The Traitor State, 1905 which delves into New Jersey's decision to favor incorporation. During this time, Steffens develops a keen interest in the systemic nature of political corruption, aiming to move beyond the notion that such problems can be solved merely by replacing bad individuals with good ones. In 1906, Steffens, Tarbell, and Baker depart from McClure's to establish the American magazine driven by a mission to provoke the outrage of American citizens by exposing government officials' corruption. However, the magazine fails to achieve the impact its editors had anticipated. Stefan's coverage of the Mexican Revolution from 1914 to 1915 marks a turning point in his thinking, 
as he begins to entertain the idea that revolution might be more effective than reform. When the Russian Revolution erupts, Stephens maintains an open mind about Soviet communism and embarks on a three-week visit to the newly formed Russian Soviet Republic, accompanying a State Department official. Despite encountering a complex and perplexing situation, he concludes that the temporary difficulties are overshadowed by hope and a plan, fully embracing communist ideology. Stephens returns to the United States and boldly declares, I have seen the future, and it works. He becomes actively involved in advocating for Russia, raising food aid within the U.S., and marrying the communist writer Ella Winter. However, his increasingly leftist views lead to alienation from his American readership. In 1924, he and Winter depart for Europe, where he continues his engagement in revolutionary politics. Stephens immerses himself in the vibrant circle of expat writers and intellectuals in Paris, notably, when Hadley Richardson, Ernest Hemingway's first wife, famously lost a suitcase containing Hemingway's manuscripts. She was en route to Stephens for his examination. The autobiography of Lincoln Stephens revitalizes Stephens' reputation in the United States, prompting his return to his native California, where he remains active in leftist activism. Revered as a captivating account of early 20th century American politics, Stephens' autobiography is characterized by his sharp wit and journalistic prowess.